Grass Sunbreak, Rathalos, Blood Drinking. Coming soon. <laughs> oh, hello, my fellow hunters, my fellow waiters for Sunbreak. Why isn't it next year? I'm here today to say three things. Number one, we know that Malzano is quite clearly a vampire. We know that he is quite literally sucking, sampling, suctioning, supping on the sweet, delicious blood of our unfortunate Rathalos victim. And we know what happens when you get bitten by a vampire. Ah, 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 ah. All right, well, there you go. That's the entire gist. Thank you very much for watching and listening, and uh, I'll see you soon. Josh, Cotton, and Hollow with the videos, dropping the humor. Okay, but no, really, though, I, I, I kind of want to explore this in a more actual way because I think there is something here, and I think that it is filled with quite incredible potential. So, firstly, let's introduce an old monster that I don't think many people have even heard of. Probably, you know, you've forgotten he even existed, you know. He's not many people's favorite monster. Yeah, I, I think the name, uh, Gormagala? <laughs> Okay, yeah, Gormagala. Everybody loves Gormagala, and for, well, a good reason. He is, like, I mean, badass, his fight is incredible, and uh, the frenzy virus, and that whole, you know, incredibly deadly epidemic that threatened to wipe out, well, a good chunk of the entire Monster Hunter world was a right good time. And I think that it is a right good time to have that right good time again. What did Gormagala exactly do? What did the frenzy equate to? Well, the easy answer is to go ZOMBIES! And while, of course, that's not literally it, the closest comparison is the cordyceps fungus that takes over the brain of an insect and forces it to walk to the top of a high place before sprouting from its literal body and spreading its seed. You also can't deny that even then, the Cordyceps kind of does make zombies out of the insects that it infects. And as you can easily argue, that so does the frenzy virus. I mean, look, let's run down the play-by-play -play here. The monster gets infected, it dies, it reanimates as something even more powerful and vicious that then can go on to infect other creatures. I mean, it, it's kind of the playbook of the undead. And that's really cool that they managed to create a system where we're essentially fighting monsters doing that whole shtick, but in a way that is biologically explained in the world of Monster Hunter through Gormagala's scales, through how they affect the brain of monsters, through how they induce this frenzied state, and how it works for him as both a survival mechanism and a free meal ticket when he chows down on the corpses of, well, you know, hundreds of frenzy exhausted and dead monsters to eventually transform into Shagaru Megala, who will then wipe out all life in hundreds of miles radius because that's the only way he feels safe to have babies. And I think, like many of you, yeah, what a experience that whole saga was. So what's the other kind of, you know, you've been infected by something and then you die and then you come back as it? Well, vampires, and we're getting strong vampirism themes from a strong vampire-based flagship who is already doing the biting and the drinking of blood. Now, more than likely, he is just a blood feeder, a blood sucker, a big old badass mosquito. But at the same time, the notion that perhaps the Rathalos that's being drunk isn't exactly fully dead, he's just going to come out of that experience very weak and very hurt, may be changed by it, is an exciting and fun possibility to imagine. Like a world in which Sunbreak has a frenzy virus-esque mechanic, but more along the lines of vampirism. Holy shit, we've got vampire monsters. But on that front, I don't want to say like, oh yes, we're going to have monsters bitten by Malzano that now start thirsting for blood and they're like near impossible to kill and they're super powerful. Though there is a certain coolness to that, but that might be, you know, just a little bit too much, especially as it basically just is frenzy virus mark 2 but at the same time i do like the idea that a monster that has been fed on by a malzano and not finished off 
is at least changed in some way. Something like the Apex State. Now, the Apex State in actuality is caused by Ibushi and Nawa and surviving an encounter with them and being driven kind of super insane by Nawa, specifically uh, magnetic waves that she sends out. It kind of really messes with monsters. But let's pretend that that's not a thing. Imagine a world in which the Apex monsters were just monsters bitten by a Malzano and survived. It kind of does that to them. That kind of thing. And I guess they can always retcon the whole Nawa explanation and go with that, but... But the point I'm making here is imagining a world where every single monster can have a souped-up, vampire-inspired, sunbreak, like, medieval, gothic, fantasy-themed version is really, really awesome. That seems to me a, a way to provide a really satisfying endgame that kind of gives every monster a place to be there, just like we were farming in uh, for you endlessly through the Apex monsters, through the guild quest, leveling them up, that worked out really well. Well, I mean, at the time it may have been very incredibly painful. <laughs> It was certainly fun and is a nice way to get a bulked out, more well-rounded endgame when you can involve every single monster thanks to a unique power of a special flagship or Elder Dragon or both in this case, being able to give them a power-up as it were, even if it does come with downsides. Now, let's have a look at this a little bit more, well, broadly and see if there's any actual sense to it, other than the fact of we know how vampires work can we see a vampire dragon biting another monster? Ooh! So we know that Rondine is in Kimura Village because she's desperately after Mr. Hammon. And the reason that she wants Hammon is, well, there is a problem in her home country, her home region, where she's from. Another way of describing a person's origin geographically. And, well, what could that issue be? They could be dealing with rampage problems that are also caused by Naura and Ibushi, but it would be weird if in Sunbreak the Expansion we just get, yeah, you know, it's just more Naura Ibushi rampages happening, but, you know, over in this castle land, so that, that's, that needs help with, because they're dealt with, right? And we even got an extra super form for Naura, so it's not like they can just bust out an even further stage and keep them going. I'm sure we'll get Master Rank versions, but it would be weird if they were a story focus and we know that they are the source of the rampage so the fact that we still need to have rampage as a mechanic because they're not just going to throw it away when it's a core unique selling point of rise whether you like it or not it definitely could do with some improving some actual stakes some intenseness to the end of each rampage would be nice for a start but surely it's going to transfer in some manner to sunbreak so I, again, love the idea of sieges being the new rampage involving the more castle aesthetic, but we need a reason for monsters to be attacking, and we need a reason for powerful apexes, or if they take a new form or a different name, to be uh, the leader of them. And what do vampires tend to have? Well, the answer is Thralls, beings that are under their control, forcibly under the will of the vampire. You know, they can actually mind control, they can bind another creature to their service, or even just straight hypnotize them into doing stuff, depending on the version of vampire you're looking at. But what if... Monsters bitten by Malzano became the new form of Apex, and then they made other monsters their thralls and used them as an army to do attacky things, and that was the Rampage and Sunbreak. It's crazy, but it's fun. But to go back to the Rondine wanting a one thing for this thing that's happening in her country, the reason she wants him is because he is a smith of a quality that they simply don't have. And that's interesting, because why would you need a smith of that high quality? Clearly it's to make a weapon that your smiths aren't capable of making. 
why would you need to make weapons that your smiths aren't capable of making? Well, perhaps the weapons that your smiths are capable of making are no longer effective. So perhaps we need Hammond, Rondine needs Hammond back in her homeland because he, she figures, or her queen figures, is the one capable of making the equivalent of, you know, the silver bullet that can slay a vampire, a silver sword, silver into a hunter's arsenal, working with such a precious and compared to most metals fragile substance and creating the tools, the arsenal, to actually combat these new vampire-flavored monsters that are enhanced, or at least changed, from an encounter with Malzano, connected to a new type of rampage under the Blood Moon that we saw in the trailer. I can't imagine that that moon is just a backdrop for Malzano and that's it. I could totally see a world in which the rampages or sieges in Rise are always under that blood moon. Maybe that does something to the monsters. Maybe anything that's had an encounter with Malzano when the red moon appears, they get a little bit crazy. I just really like the idea of a similar rampage-ish thing happening, which she kind of alludes to, but doesn't specifically say, Oh, look, the rampage is happening to Kimura. That's exactly like what I'm dealing with. She, you'd figure she would say that if that was literally the case. But the idea of something similar is happening. So she's come to the place that's dealing with it to get the smith that has made all of the incredibly effective weapons at dealing with it to take us back to deal with Malzano, or perhaps whatever the secret end boss elder dragon that takes it to another level is as we face this new type of onslaught that still falls into the general rampage category I think that's really, really cool. So basically, a Frenzy Virus-esque story, but this time around it's more tuned towards vampirism and its effects and general lore and mythology and tropes and such, and we have to combat that in a unique endgame influenced by it. Now, don't get me wrong. This is probably absolutely, like insanely off the mark, but at the same time it is possible based on the information we currently know between Malzano, the theme of the game, and Rondine, what we know about her home nation, place, country, and why she's in the village. Those two dots definitely connect to imply all of this, but the bigger picture when the other dots get involved likely will look nothing like it. But while it is still possible, I had to at least raise the possibility and talk about it. Because what a monster hunter that experience would be. A monster monster hunter experience, if you will. In any case, let me know your thoughts. I know it's a bit out there, but you know, speculation season is glorious and we will have our fun with it because you know what? That is just fun. Like if you enjoyed this, subscribe for more. Please consider supporting the future of the channel and Patreon down below. And until we meet again, a good boy. Josh, Cotton, and Hollow with the videos. Dropping the humor like a hammer on your tippy toes. Bringing entertainment on a daily arrangement to take our insanity and turn it into entertainment. Yes, I said entertainment twice. To reiterate that it is nice. To look into your faces on a mostly daily basis when you let us in your homes to make the whole world. World of stage is uh goodbye.